What's up guys, it's Dull Matter here, and today we are going to be reacting to another armor cast video. So this one is, what are those bricks on Russian tanks? Koala explains, explosive reactive armor. Um, so I'm pretty sure everyone knows what these are, They're like those metal plates, I guess is the best way to describe it, uh, or bricks as he says in the video, that you see in a lot of Russian tanks. I think they're actually on a lot of Western tanks too though, although I guess it's pretty standardized in Russia, whereas I don't think it's standardized in the West. I think we... I don't know if we've moved past that or we just had no need for it. Because um, I know a lot of how you armor a tank depends on like what your enemy is trying to fire at it. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in learning. Like, what is the point of it? Is it just extra defense that you can take off if you need to move faster? Like, you know, it's like Rock Lee's plates that he, or weights that he drops off his feet in uh, Naruto or what is it? But anyway, link to the original video down below. Let's jump into it. Uh, Trips Koala here. Throughout history, the armour of tanks has been ever-changing, with thick steel on the tanks of World War II giving way to spaced or composite armour, often supplemented by cage or bar armour, and even active defence systems in the modern day. But for those with a less conventional mindset and a taste for some dramatic flair, there's Explosive Reactive Armour, or ERA, and in today's episode of Koala Explains, that's exactly what we'll be looking at. This logo looks like the Gracie Jiu Jitsu this logo. This video was brought to you by supporters like you. Thanks for helping me make rent. Explosive Reactive Armor, or ERA, can be seen on a wide variety of both NATO and Eastern Okay, I thought we used it in the West. the Abrams and Challengers to the T-72 or Type 99. You can find it on IFVs like the Warrior, and even the Striker family of wheeled fighting vehicles have been seen to use it. Surprised they haven't put the stuff on aircraft yet. What this type of armor is designed to do is increase the vehicle's- Yeah, this is what I think of when I think of that armor, like just everywhere. ...protection primarily from shaped charge ammunition like RPGs or anti-tank missiles, at least in its basic and most common form. How it works is that bricks of ERA will detonate upon contact by an incoming round, forcing- Wait, I didn't realize it would actually detonate itself. I thought it was like explosive armor in the sense that it was like armor from explosives, not explosive armor in the fact that like the armor itself explodes. I'm guessing that's to protect from shrapnel. Basically, if it blows up, then the thing, the incoming missile will hit it. I would assume that's the reason? a steel plate against the direction of that round, which can lower its penetrative capabilities or okay, yeah, I'm destroy right. it. That this makes, makes sense. it a single use only defense. It detonates and then it's gone. By forcing the angled steel plate, known as a flyer plate, up against the force of the incoming round, the effective angle at which the round contacts the steel is raised, both dispersing the force laterally and increasing the effective thickness of the plate resisting the round. It also acts to reduce the standoff distance which a cumulative charge has to form, negating its penetrative capability further. If you're not sure what I mean by cumulative or shaped charge, then check out the previous episode. We actually just watched that. That was the last episode, or I guess first episode we watched uh, from him, so. The idea of a counter-explosion, the basic principle behind ERA, was first proposed in Russia in 1949 by Ukrainian-born Bogdan Wojciechowski, who had served in the Red Army in World War II and studied at Moscow State University after the war's end. Wojciechowski understood that the explosive forces powering shaped or cumulative charge warheads, which had begun to see widespread use during and just after the war, could be partly negated by a detonation in the opposite direction. His idea was tested with a full-scale model in 1960, but unfortunately Wojciechowski had far overestimated the amount of explosive necessary, and his Your ERA would end up destroying the model. After the failed test, the Soviet Union would set aside the idea of ERA, at least for now. Instead, for the true invention of ERA, we have to look further south. That, that ended way better than I thought it was. As soon as he said unfortunately, I thought the guy like accidentally killed himself with the fucking, with his tests. To the research efforts of West German doctor Manfred Held, an expert in ballistics and pyrotechnics. In 1969, Held travelled to Israel to observe tanks destroyed in the Arab-Israeli Six-Day War of 1967. There he saw an interesting phenomenon, where explosion of the ammunition storage inside some tanks 
had noticeably reduced the penetrative effects of rounds fired at them. In that moment, Held saw the potential of explosive reactive armour and returned to West Germany to manufacture examples for testing. But the German Defence Ministry did not share his enthusiasm. The Israelis, however, found it to be promising for equipping their Magach and Shot Kal tanks, and after refinement to the design, making it easier to mount and reducing the potential for collateral damage, Israeli defence contractor Raphael began mass producing Held's armour as Blazer ERA. This armour type first saw use in the 1982 Lebanon War and proved so effective that it caught the eyes of nations such as the United States, United Kingdom and France, all of which immediately began developing their own versions that are still- Man, the Israelis, you know, they may have a small army, but they are so ahead of the curve when it comes to technology on a lot of stuff. Still widely used today. Around this same time, specifically the mid-70s, the Soviet Union would pick back up the idea of ERA and design the famous Contact 1 armor. Very simple. And leave it to the fucking Soviets to just drop the ball. You have what could have been a 30-year lead on this technology, and now you're behind. Similar in construction to Blazer and its derivatives. From 1984, Soviet main battle tanks such as the T-64B rolled off the production line equipped with Contact 1 ERA. These tanks were given the suffix BV to denote their use of explosive protection. The T-64B became T-64BV, the T-80B became T-80BV, etc. These same types of explosive reactive armour can be found on many NATO tanks to this day as well, such as the M1 Abrams Tusk equipment, the Challengers used in the Gulf War and later Challenger 2, as well as various other vehicles. They are e the Abrams version is interesting because you can barely tell. Like with, with all the other ones they were showing, like it's pretty easy to tell that it's there. The Abrams, it just seamlessly blends into the tank. Like, you can barely even tell it's there. Easy to install without complex machinery, allowing tanks to be retrofitted with ERA in the field and create little harm to surrounding infantry. For the Soviet Union, however, there was still something missing. These types of first-generation explosive reactive armour can reduce the penetration of explosively formed projectiles by 30 to 50% but have next to no effect on kinetic energy munitions, ergo armor piercing rounds, or tandem heat warheads such as the TO-2 or Ataka. These ATGMs will detonate the ERA with the first charge, allowing the second behind it to bypass it. To counter such threats, we need to look at Generation 2 or Heavy ERA, widely used by the Russian and Chinese main battle tanks, but never adopted by the West. Gen 2 ERA bricks are little more than doubled up versions of the earlier Gen 1 stuff, with two flyer plates surrounding two explosive charges. Think of a cheeseburger compared to a Big Mac. How heavy ERA works- So ba basically one gets exploded, blocks the first one, and then the, se the second one gets exploded, blocks the second one. I mean, that uh, seems pretty simple. However, is slightly different, where okay, instead of simply pushing outwards against the direction of an incoming projectile, the two flyer plates will also move across one another, grinding against each other at high speed. This has three benefits, the first being that the sideways motion helps disperse the kinetic force laterally, and the second being that it continuously feeds fresh steel into the path of the penetrator, meaning it effectively has to penetrate the full width of the flyer plates, which can be some 30 centimeters in diameter, before even making contact with the body of the tank underneath. That's Against actually pretty smart. One ERA around just has to penetrate the thickness of the flyer plate, which is only a few millimeters deep. The third major improvement oh, made by really Generation smart. 2 ERA is its ability to defeat even kinetic energy penetrators like APFSDS projectiles, as well as shaped charge munitions. When an APFSDS rod makes contact with the ERA, the contrary motion of the flyer plates can be enough to snap the rod in two, which significantly reduces its penetration. The composite armour of the tank underneath does the rest. This meant that when Contact 5 ERA, successor to Contact 1, entered service on the T-80U in 1985, the T-80U became the most well-armoured tank in the world, capable of defeating even the depleted uranium rounds of the M1 Abrams 120mm gun. This caused obvious tension among NATO and quickly rounds were developed to try and counter this new ERA, such as M829A2 and A3 fired by the Abrams and DM53 fired by the Leopard 2. 
M829A3, for example, the most common AP round used by Abrams today, uses a large steel cap atop the DU core, which sets off the ERA early, allowing the full length of the rod to penetrate through cleanly, much like a tandem heat charge. <laughs> That's like, it's so smart, but so dumb at the same time, right? I mean, why over-engineer it, I guess, but literally it's just like, okay, so they made, they made armor that it, it keeps going across... And it causes us to have to go through the entire, you know, width of the armor in order to get through it. Let's just make a long rod that is longer than the combined width of two plates of armor. I mean, it, it you know, it's obviously going to work. But it, it, it's, like, so simple that it seems dumb. But obviously, why over-engineer it? Like, if it's going to work, it's going to work. This tipped the seesaw once again in NATO's favor. And so it was back to the drawing board for the now Russian Federation. Here we see what is sometimes known as Gen 3 ERA, in the form of the Russian Relict, equipping Three the plates. T90M and T80BVM tanks, as well as Ukrainian Duplet and Noz, and Chinese FY5, which equips their top-of-the-line Type 99A. This type of explosive reactive armor acts completely differently to older examples, consisting of a row of tiny shaped charges that detonate outwards when struck, effectively <laughs> shooting the incoming round, and often completely destroying it. These- <laughs> So I was kind of right, it literally is just more plates. It's interesting how much different the reaction is, though, um, when there are more plates. Like, one, it just goes forward. Two, they, like, slide on each other and it causes you have to go through the whole width. Three, or more and they just start like blasting off like little rockets. These new types of ERA prove effective even against rounds like M829A3 and tandem charge heat warheads such as the TO2. Of course, these types of ERA have their drawbacks, which have dissuaded Western tank designers from using heavy ERA, the most major flaw being the increased potential to cause harm to surrounding troops. Heavy ERA plates use greater explosive, which is never good to be standing close to, and this greater charge also runs the risk of a single ERA brick setting off those around it in a chain reaction. This is why you'll find heavy steel separators between contact 5 bricks on the hulls of Russian tanks and distinctive wedge shapes between the blocks on their turrets, which Relict, for example, helps to close up with its more precise and refined design. Another such modernization of Relict and other more modern ERA types, both first and second generation, ensures that they won't be detonated by autocannon fire, opening up a weak spot which could be exploited. The final topic of today's video is non-explosive or non-energetic reactive armor, referred to as Nera. This type of armor works on a similar principle, but as the name implies, contains no explosive. Instead, Nera pushes back against incoming rounds by using materials that bulge or balloon outwards when impacted, far safer for troops who might be standing nearby. Most types of modern composite armor contain some elements of non-explosive reactive armor, which although far less effective than ERA, does boost their protection levels over that of arrays lacking it. Well, that's it for today. I hope you have enjoyed this video and that you leave a like and subscribe if you did. Remember to support the channel on Patreon to get access to the official ArmorCast Discord server, exclusive content, early access, and more. And as always, thank you for watching, stay safe, and I'll catch you lads on the battlefield. The F so that, that was really interesting. I Honestly, I had no idea there was explosives in that armor. I always just thought it was steel plates that was just, you know, you could slap them on there if you need extra armor. Um... But what was most fascinating to me was just how different the reaction is from just having extra layers, right? So you have just the initial layer just shoots the plate out and the plate stops incoming uh, incoming shots. Then you add a second layer and be the way it, it blows up causes it to twist, which means they have to go through the entire width of it instead of just the, you know, the thickness of it. And then when you get to the third layer the third and, and more layers, and I think they were also slightly angled, then all of a sudden it starts acting, basically turning the metal into bullets um, and blowing up whatever the incoming round is. It, it, it's fascinating to me how much different it reacts uh, based on how many layers there are. Uh, but also, yeah, I find it really interesting that the West doesn't use it, but that, like, Russia and China do. Um, I wonder what experiments the West ran, because, like... Obviously, the West has been, you know, Russia's obviously engaged in a conflict right now. And they've, they've done a couple, right? They had Georgia. They had the earlier Ukraine conflict. They have this Ukraine conflict. Um, so Russia has been they were involved in Syria. Um, 
Russia has been involved in some conflicts over the last couple decades, like since the fall of the Soviet Union. But like America has been uh, and NATO have been involved in like Afghanistan, Iraq, like ev- they've been everywhere. They're much more combat experience, probably the highest amount of combat experience of any army anywhere in the world. And they don't want it. I wonder why they don't want the act. Like, well, he was saying there that part of it is because it you know, has a risk of casualties towards troops. Um, I'm not sure how many troops are going to be standing near a tank in the middle of a tank battle. It seems like, you know, uh, again, I've never been to war. I don't know how common that is. Maybe it's super common, but it just seems like it would not be something that would be happening. Um, but yeah, I, I mean, they're, they're the ones fighting the war. They definitely know better than me. Uh, but anyway, let me know what you think below. Like, comment, subscribe. We'll see you guys in the next one.